guys, it's Jake from Team Insanity. Normal uploading schedule every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I have the Empire Vanquish here to review, courtesy of Eric Yee sent it to us. Thank you, go look at his channel, CKC Paintball. Go look at it, say thank you, Eric. I gave him my DM for a few weeks and he gave me his Vanquish. So, first things first about the Vanquish is, if you guys watch our mini GS unboxing or the Empire Axe unboxing or any other Empire unboxing, the packaging is not always the best. It's the stupid cardboard boxes that is just stupid, I guess. I, I don't really like the Empire packaging, but they nailed it with the Vanquish, which is a good thing. Good thing they didn't put it in like a Bob Long packaging, which makes this gun a little bit better in my opinion. Packaging is a big thing for me because it, it really represents your company, your marker, and when it's sitting in the store, you know, they have like the nice the, the nice mirrored back or something in the plastic case. I don't know, it just looks really cool. So, good job with the packaging. There is a pocket right up here in the front. Eric just has an exalt barrel cover that he told me not to use because it's not his and then just you can put anything in here. Manuals, more barrel covers for stuff I guess and so there, there's pockets on here and I'll get into what I really still don't like about Empire here in a second once I open it up more fully and then he has a 1.5 so here is the original just the original bolt of the Vanquish here it is the other bolt they came out with is like a more softer shot and it's polished and that kind of good stuff so in this pocket here he has a software thing and this is what I don't like, Empire. In a $1,500 gun, you still put a CD manual in it. That's garbage. Okay, this is absolute horseshit. Okay, they can take this and throw this away and give me a full colored manual. If I can get a full card manual and a Dangerous Power G4, I should be able to get one in a $1,500 gun. I don't know why they think these CDs are good, but this is not, if you're at the field at a tournament, and you have a question about your marker or you need to hurry up and open it up really quick, the little quick start manual that they give you that tells you how to turn on, turn the gun on and off and how to change the battery, that ain't gonna do it. They need to get rid of these stupid little CD manual things. It's, it's very, very, very aggravating for me because if you're at the field, you're not gonna have a CD, ROM, disc player, laptop compatible thing out and if you do, Good job for you, but most people don't, like me. So get rid of that empire, please. And we open it up. So as you see, we have some pockets right here. And we have the USB cable thingy. You get a little sticker in here that I'm not going to take out. You normally get a can opener and a headband. He didn't send that to me. I would have took the can opener. Opened up all my booze with it. Not really. Um, but then you get a nice rebuild kit, so there's a nice, there's a good amount of O-rings in here. As you can see, they give you a little bit extra lube, a little grease, because who doesn't need that? And this is some extra uh, detents, and this is the 1.5, like I said. There's extra detents, there's extra screws, extra everything in this. And what I really like about the Vanquish, one of the, the top things that, I mean, it, it's a genius idea is, Every single screw on this gun is the same exact size screw. So, if you lose a screw and you don't even have any in your in your parts kit, I'm pretty sure the Allen that they used or the screw is like the most commonly used screw out there for all the paintball markers. Like it's the one that matches the Mini GS grips. It matches like the LV1 grips. It's um, on a lot of them, and you open it up. I like this packaging. You get like a nice little cover thing but it's really cool because all the allen wrenches or all the all the screws are exactly the same so it only takes one allen wrench that you have to bring to the field which is I think is pretty damn genius so no longer do you have to bring 5,000 allen wrenches and lose them all the time like me when I had my proto reflex rail I lost a few of my allen wrenches that I really needed and it's really it's a very common screw so if you do lose one you can replace it pretty fast pretty easy that's what I really really like about this that's actually like my favorite one of my favorite things about this is that all of this all of the screws are exactly the same it takes the same exact allen size so you don't have to carry out 
um, you know, full Allen key set, which I think all the other companies should start doing. I think it's a genius idea, and you know, like I said, this nice little um, pocket right here, you get the gun itself, which I think is really nice, and then this is also Velcroed on, and I'll take this off, I'll put this to the side. What you get in here, is you open this up, and you get your full barrel kit, okay? Now, what I don't like about this Super Freak barrel kit, it's not the actual full, full Super Freak, because the full Super Freak, you get like the apex tip and everything else. The one thing that I don't like about it is how the Freak inserts are bored. So, I have the 685 in this one, and you get the carbon fiber tip, which, if you know me, I like, if you watch the Stella Barrel Review, I like carbon fiber tips because guess what? No tip wear, which is really nice, but at the same time, it does make, I need to clean this barrel, it does make it a, a little bit louder, okay? It does give it a little bit more of a pop because the carbon fiber on this is so, so thin that it just echoes and it makes the carbon fiber shake back and forth. Too bad I don't have like those super, super slow-mo cameras that I can show you when it shoots. The, the carbon fiber will actually like, it, it vibrates and it makes a big echo and it shakes and it just makes it a little bit louder. Take my word for it, physics, if you don't understand like Nick. But anyways, so you get the 685. Now this is my biggest thing about, that I really don't like about this barrel kit that I think they could have done a little bit better on. So you get a 685 here, I have a 675. Number one, who the hell is gonna use a 675 barrel back? Unless if your name is Mills, you're not going to use a 675 barrel back. Maybe if you're using reballs, I mean, sure, but there is a reball insert out there that Freak makes specifically for reballs because they like to try to keep reballs all the same size. So a 675 barrel back, you're not really going to. I've never seen paint this small ever. I was using the, the smallest I used was a 680 barrel when I went and played it indoor. Hopefully that footage is up. And a 695. You're not going to use a 695. This is like shooting a shaft for a barrel back. I this this one is pointless. I mean, these two right here, right off the bat, you probably never ever use unless if you're using some really really old sun baked. It's been sitting in a very high moisture area, and you kept it in a hum cigar humidifier or something, and you kept it like in a really humid area where the balls swelled that much. I mean, if you're if you have a fifteen hundred dollar gun, you should be able to pay for sixty dollar cases of paint. Sixty dollar cases, even the thirty or forty dollar cases of paint, you're not going to be using this. It's just going to be smaller, which is the six eight zero bore. And then you get the six nine zero bore again. I Eric uses the six nine zero bore because he likes to overbore. I think that it's good that they put this one in, but again, it's not going to be used that much. And then you have this, the 680 bore, which I actually ended up using at the indoor. And it kind of, I just like to have a really tight bore. It started, my balls were kind of right there on the line of, they were sort of rolling through with the 685. So I just put the 6 680 bore on there. Now, if you didn't notice, is that it goes in 0.5 increments, which I wish they would have changed. Okay. These two inserts, Empire, you need to throw these out the, out the window. Whoever through these and needs to get kicked in the nuts because these most likely will never ever 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 be used okay what I wish they would have done is put a 6A9 bore back in there which is apparently the most common paint size um I like that maybe spread it out a little bit so use like a 689 put a 69 693 in there at the most you never probably never ever use that but if you put a 689 bore in there then if you had a 6 693 bore boom that's all you really need. That's the highest where you need to go. And then put it in like 0 .3 increments. That's just, I don't like how they did it. It's too spread out for me. But I mean, you do get a nice barrel and it's, it's a super freak, so whatever. It's a decent barrel kit, but I just think that it's too, too big of increments. And we get to the gun itself, which is really, really cool. So I'll just put the barrel on. He's got black on black, which is really cool. It's a dust black on like the nice gloss back or whatever. Now I'm going to start with my favorite part, one of the favorite part of the marker. And, well, I'll start with the trigger actually. Everyone that I've seen reviews on is going nuts about the trigger. Um, I have to say I like the Axe trigger more. 
Uh, that's just me. I like this a lot for ramping because you can really, it fits my two fingers really well. A lot of people use ramping nowadays or PSP or whatever. A lot of people don't use the typical semi-auto like I do all the time because they can't reach 30 balls a second on semi. But I will sit there and I like this, how it works for, for uh, ramping for semi. I definitely like the axe trigger a little bit more. My favorite feature on this gun is the board by far. This is probably one of the most advanced but yet one of the simplest to use boards I've ever seen out on the market. Okay, One button operation turns on, you see Empire. Now it's really easy, this is a joystick. Okay, I didn't really get that at first so these buttons actually move side to side, left to right, up and down. If you want to turn off the eyes, push it up and then you turn off the eyes and then the solenoid starts to clack. And if you want to turn it back on, then you basically do the same exact thing in reverse. You push it up and then the eyes turn back on. There's a game timer on this. There is the other thing that I really like is if you're like Jacob and you don't know when to clean your gear or if you just don't at all, this gun will tell you when it needs to be lubed. There is a lube meter in here, which is really, really awesome, which I like about it. So it tells you when it needs to be serviced, just like a car. So you reset it once you lube it and it'll tell you once you need to lube it again. It's actually a really, really cool system. It's pretty advanced. Um, the main menu, if, to go into the configuration mode, the thing about, I like OLEDs, but there's a fine line between very difficult and, and sort of all right. This is a very good example of an OLED board. The Dangerous Power FX, the, one, the board that Jacob has, that thing is so advanced and you can do so much with it, but the thing is that it's so hard to navigate and so hard to use. This thing is very, very easy to navigate. So if you want to go into your configuration mode, you take the joystick and you just start scrolling through everything. You go down and you get to configure, you get the system, exit off, and then you go back to configure. So on this you have, you, I can change the ramp on here, rate of fire cap. This, I go right into the BPS change. Everything is right here and it's really, really easy to use. You got dwell right here. The other cool thing is that there's a dwell lock on this. So if you are handing out your gun to people, you can make it so they can't change your dwell. And you have your system, you have your game timer. I don't, this thing is just, it's really easy to navigate, unlike some other guns like the Dangerous Power FX for one. And the other thing, I use this out, and you can also turn up and down the brightness. So say you live in Arizona, it bright sun all the time. This screen will dim automatically. And if you need to see if it's too dim, you hit the button and it'll dim right back up for you, which is really, really cool. So you can see out in the sunlight. I have walked out in the sunlight with it. Now, in terms of the ergonomics, you guys know I like to critique er ergonomics, is this gun is very, 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 very long, okay? I'm not sure if it's longer than a G6R, but it is very stretched. And I actually like the feel of the front grip on this. I like, you know, if you guys watch my DM... 12 review or the DM14 review is this sort of reminds me of like a DM14 and I like how my DM12 feels that it's really compact and there's so many ways I can hold it. I feel like this is a good mixture of both sort of like the DM14 and the DM12 is I can really grip this front grip really well. I can wrap my thumb around. It's just it feels really nice and I really like the ergonomics of it. Um, it has a nice clamping feed neck. Really nice. Um, the ASA meh because the thing about the ASA that I don't like is that if I will show you once once I get into the maintenance part of it is that this it lines up flush with the ASA which I don't like so I'll show you that in the maintenance part but what I'm about to do next since I just sort of went over all the specs of everything that I like what I'm going to do next is something that hasn't been done by the way this gun is not smoother than a Lux hate to burst your bubble anyone at my field will prove you wrong and I have Luxes to prove you wrong but this gun is not smoother than a Lux, but the Geo 3.5 just came out. So what we're going to do now, before we do the efficiency test, is we're going to shoot this side by side, a 3.1, and we have a few other people to tell you their thoughts on what is smoother, the 3.0, or not the 3.1, the 3.5 or the Vanquish. So we're going to go into that video, then the efficiency test, then I'll bring it back in for the maintenance. All right, so before we do the efficiency test on the Vanquish, I have a Geo 3.5 here with the Vanquish. For all you fanboys that love the Vanquish so much, hate to ruin your spirits that the Lux is a lot smoother. It is also quieter. I don't care what you say, any of the Luxes that I've shot, 
is smoother and quieter but if you guys disagree go shoot a Lux 2.0 versus a Vanquish I don't care what you say this is not even it's it's not smoother than a Lux so don't even um now there's not many videos of a 3.5 versus a Vanquish in terms of shooting because the 3.5 just came out so we have one here um what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gonna show you this is what a, we're gonna sort of do like a sound comparison so here's the Vanquish It, they both kind of have like a little bit of a pop and now I'm just going to kind of balance them both so You can see the kick I think they're pretty much almost the same. I think the Geo might be just a teeny bit smoother Lux is still the smoothest out of all of these No, I think the Geo. Our awesome hopper. Yeah, Geo smoother. All right, Jacob. I think the Geo is smoother. Ooh, hopper. Uh, it's hard to say which one is quieter. They're, I, I think they're about the same. I think, same. I think the Vanquish has a softer shot. The Vanquish does seem a little bit softer. I, it has a softer shot. They're basically the same, to be honest. I can't really tell the difference. I think the Geo is a little what bit smoother. What if I smoother. have to make a choice? The Geo is smoother. This is a tiny bit quieter. Like, barely tell the difference quieter. I just think the Vanquish has a little bit softer of a shot, in a way. It's a different shot. It's a different shot. Here, let me see the Gotta polish off this. <laughs> oh, <geo. laughs> Alright, we're doing the Vanquish efficiency test. So, as you can see, the gauge, we are just under a hair of 4,000 psi on a 68 45 Ninja tank that I've used on all of the efficiency tests on our videos so far. Alrighty, so what we're going to do is we're going to chrono it. First pod. We're shooting 685 bore back. And we're using some a mixture of Vulcan graffiti paint and some evil. It's all the same bore, so. Oh shit. So as you can see, right at 275, it's pretty consistent, plus or minus 5. Alright, Travis, take it away. Did it jam? Yeah. Goddamn rotor! Oh, 
Quite the spread. <laughs> That's a good thing. Two fifty. We're still good. Yeah, you're still good. That's your shot. Oh yeah, done. Keep on shooting over. Two thirty. Keep on going. I'll still use those. That's it. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, pull up the bowl, seven, eight. I'd call that nine. I mean, that's all that we had left. So basically, nine pods. It purges all. And just to show you what bolt it is. It is the 1.5 bolt, which is supposed to have a smoother shot, but be a teeny bit less efficient. That's the bolt that we're using. So, just to show you the bolt. All right, that's the efficiency test. Now let's go take it in and maintenance it. Thank you. All right, so here's the maintenance part of the Empire Vanquish review. So, I referenced the G6R earlier. The G6R is very, very, very long, so I'm gonna line it up from ASA to ASA, grip frame to grip frame. And as you can see, the Vanquish is substantially longer. Okay, so if you have big hands, the G6R, I always recommend it for people that are like, are like very big people, like people like Dave Baines, like 300 pounds, two, 280 pound guys that make runs down the field all the time. Those are the kind of, the G6R is the gun that I really recommend. That and the DM14, well this thing is even a longer than that. So you get a very, very big grip on this gun and it's very good for shooting lanes and that's that's what I was talking about earlier now with the ASA that I was talking about I have the dangerous power FX here so the thing that I like about the wraps on off ASA is as you can see right here is that when you have the tank screwed in there's a little lip right here so you can take this and flip it off really really easy no matter what if there's a tank screwed in or whatever you can take this and there's still lip to hook your finger and take that and flip it off. The thing about the Vanquish is that you don't see that lip at all. It lines up 100% flush with the ASA right here. There's, there's nothing there. So if you're using something like a Gorilla Air Tank or something like that where the reg and everything is compact really tight and it, and it just com comes in really, really tight and easy, then you know that's going to be a problem. Um, getting digging your finger in there and having to flip it off which you know that I wish they kind of would have used the axe ASA on that but whatever it's you know I sort of wish they could have done something with the wraps ASA alright so now how you remove the bolt out of this is that there is a little tiny like a button right here I already tried this when I was out on the field I aired it up and I pressed the button don't worry the bolt won't fly out it won't go anywhere because it's on a groove system so on, I'll press the little button, you take this, you just push the bolt over to the side that the button is on, you take it with your finger, you push it over, you slide it back just like I did, so it'll look like that, you slide it back and you twist it over one more time and she slides on out, okay? That's how you do it and as you can see right there is that there is actually like a little track that it has to be on and also this thing also has laser eyes. So I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, right there, you can see it. So there is laser eyes, 
which is nice. And so here is your bolt assembly. So pretty pretty simple basically. I mean it's not it's nothing like that's too hard. Back here you want to take the back cap, want to unscrew it. And I like to put this part aside for last. And on the inside here, there's a spring. You want to drop that out. Be careful with the spring. Don't lose that spring. Now, there is a few ways of doing this. I'm going to wipe this bolt off first. Now, like I said, this is the shiny I showed you in the efficiency test. This is the 1.5 bolt. Now, there is a few ways of taking this part of the bolt off. I'm going to show you the way that Empire recommends it for you, or to take it off, because that's the way I like to do it, is the way that the manufacturer does it. And the reason why is they recommend you, so you can't pull it out this way, okay? There's no way you can pull it out that way, because there's a little milled groove where you can't take it out. But there's this little rubber soft tip bolt, or soft part of the bolt right here. And if you try to take that, you can push it through, and you can literally just yank this thing through all the way if you would like. But I don't do that because there is inner O-rings and stuff. And as you can see, it is sort of like a struggle to yank it through. And the reason why is it grabs on all the inner O-rings as you're ripping it out. So, if, of course, if you're at a tournament and you got to go really, really quick, you know, maybe you don't have time to take this part of the bolt off and, you know, you have to rip it through. But the reason why I don't rip it through is that, I mean, this soft tip uh, will just absolutely come through and it can grab the O-rings and pull them out if you're not careful, if, if you do it for a while. So, what Empire tells you to do is to take off this soft tip. And if you watched any of the die gun reviews that I have, is the bolts have these, like the front O-rings, sort of just like this soft bolt. And this is a pain in the ass to get off just with your fingernails. So, what you do is I always take it and I pinch it, and I take my other finger and I push it forward just like that. So just like how you change an O-ring, you literally just take this on one side, you pinch it, and you'll see that you'll see one part raise up and you just push it out. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. Just take it and pinch it from underneath and push it up and you can push it out pretty easy. So that way, now there's no grabbing of any O-rings, there's nothing like that. And I like to clean off this part of the bolt first. I'm using a dish towel right now. One of Jacob's finest dish towels. And I have a microfiber right here. And that you just basically just wipe this whole thing down. It's pretty simple maintenance. There, there's nothing. It's not taking apart an autococker, but it's definitely not, you know, putting a little bit of oil on a ram on an ego, anything like that. And there is, like I said in here, there is some inner O rings, I'm pretty sure, in here someplace. And I'm just going to take this. I'm not really familiar with the O rings on the inside of the gun but it is very very oily because we used some good paint for the efficiency test and then we used some bad paint and it did not chop any balls the only time that it chopped a ball was when we put the shitty shake and shoot hopper on it with um, the 3.5 and we did the comparison test that's the only time that it chopped a ball but that was not because of the vanquish's fault that's because we were using a shake and shoot hopper and it was not necessarily feeding the best so I like to shove microfibers up in places that they should be shoved. I'm gonna put this up there and wipe out the rip out everything on the inside. Shove her down in there. This is pretty straightforward. If you guys own a Lux, I mean it's a little bit different than a Lux bolt, but I mean it's nothing. This is nothing like very hard that you can't do. And now I'm just gonna wipe this one off, even though it's practically wiped off. And you just take. I'm going to wipe this part of the bolt off also. This is a boring part of the video. Hang with me. A few guys. I'm not going to take apart anything else of the Vanquish. The reason why is if you take apart anything more on the inside, like the ASA, guess what? Empire voids your warranty. So go fuck yourself, Empire. But the thing that's really nice about Empire is that they are very chill about sending replacement parts so if you blow annoyed call Empire they'll hook you up they'll send you a new one for free most of the time 90% of the time if you blow a mini annoyed anything like that they will replace you Empire has some great service the best service customer service I've ever seen personally would be Virtue 
but Empire also has some great customer service, so just set that right there, lube her all up, and now I like to lube some of the inner O-rings right here, I used a little bit right there. Now you basically just put your finger in there, giggity, and you just work the lube around and you try to feel for where the inner O-rings are at. It's pretty simple. And then you slide this bad mammer jammer right back in there. I like to work it around a little bit. And before you forget, because I know people will always forget, is I like to put on the soft, the soft tip first. So that way I don't forget to go put, put her on. Put that down like that. You don't really need to lube up the soft tip. Now, if you do this wrong, you are a dummy. Just say that right now. And I'm just going to lube this up. I used a little bit too much lube right there, so I'll try to spread it out. And... Anyways, Empire, great customer service. If you have any questions, call them up. They'll, help, they'll hook you up. Now, this spring only works one way and one way only. So, if you put it on this way, you're putting it on the wrong way. If you put it on right here, the short end goes on this part. Boom. Oh, shit, knock that down. But if you put it on right here, you have it on the right way. Notice this big part goes in this way. If you do it the wrong way, you're dumb. But that's all right. This is an informational video how to help you. Hashtag Team Insanity is the coolest. And you take this, you wipe some lube on the outside O-rings. It's pretty basic maintenance. It's nothing too drastic that no one can't handle. If you can't handle this, then you must be Jacob and you should own a poppet. And what I like to do, because it's not my gun, is I'm going to wipe down the inside of the gun. Because, like I said, I did chop a ball on the Geo 3.5 versus the Vanquish shooting test, so I'm going to wipe it down all on the inside. It's all shitty on the inside of the feed neck, but I'm not going to bore you with wiping that down. Basically, you just slide the bolt back in the way that you took her out. And you put it in like this. Make sure that the back cap is screwed in all the way. That's very important, important, which mine is not. Want to tighten it down. And one thing that I went full retard on the first time is when I tried to slide the bolt back on, is when I had it in the track as I kept on like trying to push it back, I'm like, oh god, I broke the gun. But you have to push the button down as you as you try to slide it back into the spot. So, push it back in, slide it in the track, push it down the spot. I'm going to take this apart a little bit more and clean it down. Also, one last thing for people that don't know how to split apart the gun, which I am not going to show how to do because I could care less, because I have no reason to split apart the gun. But if you do want to split apart the gun, you stick your Allen wrench that you get from Empire, stick her down right there, unscrew it, and this gun will open up and that way you can do the software updates and all that stuff. So now we are going to bring out the camera and we will do the conclusion. So in conclusion, um, this Vanquish is something that I've never really shot before and it's, it's sort of hard to explain. The ball drop on this is real for sure. It's almost like you shoot an apex and the balls drop down. People, like DJ says it's the range, I just th feel like it's the way that the gun shoots because I've seen guns and the, when the balls lose range they just kind of flutter down. These balls legit, when I'm shooting them, if I'm in a back corner and I'm shooting I, and I'm watching the balls curve and drop down on the top of people's heads in the loader in the, in the other back corner. It's sort of really different. The ball drop on this is real. It's really nice. I don't. It took me a little bit to get used to. It is accurate enough for you. It's. I mean, it's a fifteen hundred dollar gun. You're gonna get accuracy out of the barrel and the paint that you're using. So when people ask, "Hey, how accurate is the gun?" It's how accurate or how much paint or how much money you're spending on your paint. So overall, it's smooth. 
I think it has sort of like a little bit softer of a shot than the 3.5, but I really think it's like a toss up. They're both like exactly the same in a way. I feel like the Vanquish has sort of more of a pop, but I think that's the barrel. To be honest with you, I think that's the carbon fiber barrel. But I really do enjoy how this thing shoots. I think it shoots really, really nice. It doesn't. It's not as smooth as a Lux, so just don't even go there because you're wrong. But um, yeah, I I think it's a great shooting gun, especially now that they fixed everything that was wrong with it. That now that you don't have to take out the bolt, that was very very stupid. That they actually fixed the detent system, so your detents don't get worn down and all that. Thing that it, it's a it's. It, you can actually pick this gun up now and buy it. I never really recommended it beforehand, but now that everything is fixed on it, I really like it. I love the board. Trigger's all right. It's decent. It's an Empire trigger, so it's nice. Bolt is nice. ASA is nice. Everything on it is nice. If you buy, I'm seeing them go 700 used, so that's a great price if you're in the used market. Uh, I think it's really comfy. Grip is nice. It's a very, very long gun. So if you're a small guy like me, you can use it. I was using it. I had to get used to it, but. I mean, you know, I'm used to smaller, more compact guns, but if you're a long guy and you really like that stretch, shooting on the shooting on the brake, shooting them lanes, and I don't know, I, f I feel it's really nice snap shooting, and I, when I heard people, I let Travis play with it for a game, when I heard Travis shooting it towards me, it was pretty damn quiet from the distance. So overall, great gun, good job Empire, so that's the review I guess, good job, thanks for watching.